Uh, I thought we'd begin, we get started with the you know stuff that we have to do. The first is I I, I was uh, I was thinking I might actually put this agenda up, but I can't figure out how to do it. Okay. So the uh, the first thing is uh, we're calling the meeting to order. Um, and then um, I'm really happy you're all here. Um, I had a conversation with Bella. She called me and she said, I've seen a river otter. So I thought you'd just say your name and one amazing thing that happened to you in the last month. So let's start with you, uh, Mimi. I'm Mimi Bertram. <laughs> amazing thing that happened to me. Um, You know, I'm kind of not in that space at the moment, um, okay. but spring is here and things are flowering and that is amazing. And I'm really digging the sunshine, so. <laughs> yeah, great. Okay, Brian, how about you? So you're not muted, but we, we can't still can't hear you. Mm. Nothing. Yeah. I want to check your mic. Okay, we're going to skip you and go to Linda. Hi, I'm Linda Homan. And an amazing thing that happened to me this month is I've become a certified habitat steward. Great. Mm -hmm. uh, and did we do you? Uh, okay. I'd be happy to go. Uh, and Udeloy. And an amazing thing that happened this month was I saw a pair of pileated woodpeckers today, and I just love those birds. And to see a pair of them is really special. Wonderful. Okay, how about you, Matt? Uh, Matt Sun. Uh, I did a retreat with my men's group this weekend and the sweat lodge, and it was really special. Tracy? Hi, uh, Tracy Furutani. I guess I should be so, okay. um, My name is Tracy Furutani, and uh, the amazing thing, I don't know if it's amazing yet because it's not done, is that it may be easier to do a natural gas ban on new construction than I thought. It might just be one section of our building code. So I, I thought that was really positive. I thought I was going to have to write like pages. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. Great. Awesome. I saw the Grand Canyon. I'd never seen the Grand Canyon. The first day it was covered with snow. You couldn't see one thing. I thought, what canyon? <laughs> <laughs> the next day it cleared up. Um, snow on the ground, but beautiful. So that's quite struck. This is Bella saying she's at a school board meeting. So she'll be late. For okay, Brian, did you get your mic fixed? No. Okay, we'll come back to you. Oh, sometime. Um, so the next thing is the, the adoption of the agenda. And the agenda is um, to look at the current um, action plan. We're going to go through it the way we did before. We're focusing on, I think, uh, if Brian gets his things back, we'll look at that section that he's been working on and then some of the implementation. And then try and figure out how we can get into working groups that will allow us to move a little bit more on filling fleshing things out. Then there'll be reports from the communication team. The data team doesn't have any a report this time. Some quick updates from the chair and um, the Green Fair uh, coordination and then anything else. Is there anything else anybody wants to add to the agenda? Nope. And you're still. The, no, the no for those of you. What was it, Brian? We couldn't hear Brian. We still can't hear Brian. Brian, can you call in on the phone? Oh, that's a good point. Is there any objection to the? I'm going to keep moving. Any objection to the uh, agenda? Okay, uh, we'll assume the uh, agenda is accepted. And the next item on this is uh, the meeting minutes. Um, I. Is there a motion to approve the March 7th uh, meeting agenda? Linda? I'll make a motion to approve the March 7th minutes. Is there a second? I'll second, second it. 
<laughs> any are there any objections to the March 7th meeting minutes? Okay. Well, I assume the meeting minutes have now been approved. Are there citizen comments? Um oh, we have one citizen. Um if you'd like to make a comment, raise your hand. Jessica just sent her to um, Molly. So if you'd like to make a comment, you just raise your hand. No. <coughs> okay, no comment. Hey, hey, Jessica, how are you? I'm good. Just right. yeah, trying to come up for air. Anna won't be with us tonight. She is working um, uh, to pay for her new college that she's going to UC Santa Barbara next year. Oh, fabulous! My nephew is there. Uh, great nephew, I guess. He ha loves it. She's at the beach. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's terrific. Uh, oh. Uh, Jessica, we're just saying one amazing thing that happened to you in the last month. Oh, she left. We're just by way of introductions, Jessica, which you missed, we're uh, saying one thing that um, amazed us in the last month. And we had Peleated Woodpeckers in the Grand Canyon and a sweat lodge and, um, and then you're next. That's okay. <laughs> right there. So what happened? What you? So the amazing thing for, I was actually in Tahiti and it was a little bit more than a month ago, but in Tahiti and the coral reefs were actually in amazing condition. They're so surprising to me, the best that I've seen of any place that I've been to in the last, well, since maybe 30 years ago when I, I had the pleasure of seeing a lot of very pristine, but given the amount of tourism and, you know, potential for coral bleaching and everything, they actually were in really, really good condition. I saw, yeah, just some unbelievable coral reefs and fish and anemones and rays, all kinds of rays, manta rays, sting rays, eagle rays, um, sharks. Yeah, it was unbelievable. Very Amazing. heartwarming to think that those ecosystems do still exist. And Dana, what about you? Something amazing. Oh my gosh, you can't possibly compete with that. I know. <laughs> I mean, one of the things that's amazing me right now is how much time it takes to put together a class <laughs> and how I have so little time for anything else. Uh, so that's sort of where I've been sitting. Okay. Amazing. Okay. I, um, uh, I just want to give a little background and then sort of proceed with what, and please feel free to jump in with questions. You want to try your mic, Brian? <laughs> okay. Um, that, uh, if you recall last month, what we did was we took, we began with the document that that was on the on the shared drive. And we, we looked at the first part of the document and our strategy for looking at the document was not to, um, not to edit each kind of different things, but was to, when we got, I, I'm reading it out loud. And when you came to a section where you had a question or you had a comment, you could write the comments in the, on the side. And that what in the long term we'll do is incorporate those once we have them out there, but this is not the time to where we're gonna um, edit together. We're, we're, but if you have an issue that you want to talk about that you think we need to talk about, please bring that up and we'll pause and stop and talk about that. Um, and then um, the, uh, you know, at some point we'll use it, take all those comments and revise them and put them into a, a final document. Then also a, a committee, a subcommittee, Matt and um, Dana and uh, Tracy and I looked at um, the document uh, as a whole. And um, turns out Matt is just like an amazing <laughs> reorganizer. And he did some, he did two things to the document that I think will be helpful in orchestrating. One is he set up an outline 
on the on the um, left hand side of the page. Our comments are on the right side, and then our the document is in the middle. And then we once we agreed on the outline, we move pieces around a little bit to fit into that document. Is that accurate? Yeah. It's amazing. Uh, let's see. Um, then during this month, people have added to the document variously. Some people have added a few comments and some people have added uh, significant sections of the document. Um, and what I'm suggesting we focus on today is two sections, but I don't, actually I'm gonna revise that because one of them was the stuff that Brian had put in, but if you can't talk to us, I'm not sure we can proceed there and we'll put that at the end and maybe if he figures that out. And then we'd look secondly, uh, or firstly, I guess now, at the implementation section of it. And Mimi did a lot of work on it. I added some things and a number of other people added some stuff to it where we were looking at uh, the other cities implementation plan and sort of dumping things in there. And um, I'm gonna, let's see. Close this. This page. Okay, oh, I'm, I'm selling out here. Um, I'm going to share my screen, and um, Brian, you could think about like just exiting and re-entering. I, I think I got it. Uh, okay. okay. Um, I've lost my document. You know. what, what's your amazing thing? Yeah. Well, my your... that I was going to say the amazing thing is putting the batteries in right. Oh, uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> There's a positive end. I don't think you guys know positive and negative end. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, I've lost my Google Doc, so here we are again. One more time. Uh, the Spirit of Truth document. Who who did that one? You're holding the car thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is not it. This is one more page. I apologize. I thought I had this. Um, this one. Uh, now, you know, sometimes as soon as we're all together again, which maybe never will, have, this will be all worked out, right? <laughs> I'll know how to do this really in our sleep. There we go. Okay, so, okay, um, so, wow, uh, um, all right, so the, as I said before, this section over here is the outline that we were, we were, we were, we are following. Um, we added a little bit, I think we added, can you see it at the bottom, the basic strategies. So that's, so what I would, I'm sorry, now I'm blithering again, apologies. We're going to go back and I think look at the stuff that Brian had entered and sort of work on that, look at that piece, and then come and do the implementation piece. Does that work for you, um, Brian? Okay. So um, there's some things we definitely need to come back to. So this is where I think we're starting. Is that right, Brian? Yeah, no, I think we can start here. So I guess what um, what I what I basically did I for the this first section I, I just essentially copy and pasted the tree board report from 2010 because what I what I thought we would need to do and 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 please tell me I'm wrong I I'm I'm just kind of flying you know kind of blind here and thinking that we kind of need to present the case of why these systems are important, why forests are important, why streams are important in, in terms of climate change. And um, think about you know what resources we get from them, what value they can serve in mitigating climate. And, and then talk about um, you know, how we can best preserve these systems so that we can be um, resilient as climate proceeds. Uh, so that that was kind of my approach for both looking at the forest systems and the stream systems. Did it, did anybody have any other thoughts about what what would be a better 
a better approach. I'm, I'm, I'm totally open to it. I just, that's just the kind of the way I, I talked about it. Okay, I think we need to add those two questions as guidance for how to read this. You had two questions, right? One was, well, what was the first oh, one? Well, the first, the first is what is the importance of an urban forest? And the, uh, the second part would be what is the importance of, of urban streams or waterways, watersheds, I guess would be a better way of saying it. What value do they serve, you know, at, in terms of climate change? or mitigating climate change. And then what actions do we need to take um, in order to be resilient with climate change, given the, the value that, that these systems hold? Okay. So are those headings, Brian? Do you see uh, the, it could the, be. The importance of the urban forests, what's the importance of streams and watersheds? What value do they have? Is that? Yeah. Oh, and I guess one of the things, not just to add, um, sorry, I'm kind of gathering my thoughts from being mic microphone-less. Um, we can start thinking about well, not only do the these systems have value, but what are the estimates of what value they're actually serving us in Lake Forest Park. And that's why the tree information is really valuable because it shows how much carbon we're sequestering. It shows how much pollution it's pulling out of the air. Um, it gives us like numbers that people can actually identify with. Um, and once when we get more, the new report, which is, has anybody heard, is it, is, it, is it out yet or is it due out yet? Or do we have any news on that for from the tree it's board? They're doing the inventory. I think this is someone, right? Yeah, I I thought it was it was all done. They're just wrapping it up, but I could be wrong. Not yet. Okay. Putting it together, right? And we've got and we've got a whole bunch of information on stream importance and all the we've got a whole bunch of data on our streams in Lake Forest Park, and I that I think it's applicable. And uh, so I, I I guess that was also a, I thought an important piece was to to actually talk about what data we have about our our natural environments. And, and as we look through this, this, uh, this actually lists the, uh, the, uh, um, the data that you're talking about. Yeah, so well, so again, this is, this is from the 211 or 210 uh, tree board report. So when we get the two, 2023, we'll have an updated version of this and be fascinating to see the difference of what, what differences we see between the two reports. Okay. And okay, so we don't want to be. What would happen if they are slow? Do we hold? We go, we, well, we go with this data. We, I mean, this data is still valuable. It, I think it's still. I I I would be shocked to see a huge difference between 2010 and now. Okay. Yeah, we could always. Yeah, we could always add that in, as a as an addendum. So I, I guess I'm not, you know, in terms of my methodology, which was to read through this, this is somebody else's report. Do you think there's value in reading through it and making notes on it? Well, something that Brian said really basically uh, struck home with me is that maybe it's not this part of the report, but the way in which he frames it as studying in groups of systems. You system scientists out there, maybe in the introduction, we need to actually say explicitly that our approach is to view this whole ecosystem as a series of, or what is it, a parallel set of systems that are interacting with each other, and that's why we're breaking down these things in the way we are. And, and that's that's an excellent point, Tracy, because some of the things I mentioned in, especially in the stream, the urban stream importance was, you know, the the need for riparian zones or the vegetation that coincides with with the with the. Um, uh, with the with the watersheds that that help to filter and provide cooling, provide air flows and things like that, so that you're right, you can't. It's hard to separate the two into but discrete what, units. What you're is that in in the I don't want to lose this introduction. Uh, we need to talk about. We we acknowledge that we're using a systems based approach. Me to the introduction of this. 
or wherever appropriate. I have no idea where it goes. Okay, you just put it in there. I don't want to lose any right. of these. So again, I, I, I'm gonna. I, I don't know what how to proceed here. I'm, you think we should read through it the way we've done the others? Well, or? well, I, I would, I would, I would say for for this first part because it is pretty much a copy and paste from the tree board. Okay. These are these things that I've highlighted, as you can see, are more about updating based okay. on the new report. And also, you know, some of it is is about relevance. I, I find some of it a little bit irrelevant to what I would consider part of an, a climate action plan, but I, I'm happy to be overruled on that. I mean, that's, that I mean, they include, um, for instance, if you, if you, can you scroll back up? Um, mm -hmm. Sarah? Oh, there was a, yeah, there's a relevance point here. What's my relevance point that I was doing here? Uh, Consequently reduces air pollution. Yeah, I mean, from power plants, I, I, how many power plants do we have in Lake Forest Park? <laughs> well, it depends how many <laughs> generators do we have. <laughs> how many windmills? Right. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I mean, stuff like that, which I'm not sure why they even include. There's, they mentioned power plants a couple of times. I think they're probably just going off of a paper that they, they saw and not really thinking about the relevance to Lake Forest Park. One of the things that I worry about is I'm just saying where where is here where we're talking about estimated 32 tons of pollution, CO, and all the two genes, and that, that sort of. I don't think belongs in this report because I don't think everybody understands it. I think CO2 we're talking about. Um, just so well, true, but um, I guess one of the they do. I mean, I I, I I get what you're saying, Sarah. I I'm just wondering if if it's this is one of those things where it's hard to to separate out climate change from air pollution because when you think about you know, when you warm the air, that's going to also create more dust. You're going to get more, you know, the, there's just a lot of things that that okay. can kind of piggyback. Well, is your out. sense, Brian, that you could reorganize this, this report? Yeah, yeah, I could. I, and I could, if you want me to whittle it down and make it more compact, I can do that too. What's in group? I think that that was one of my thoughts was looking at right now, the document is 23 pages. And like seven of those pages are the parts that you have related to uh, streams and trees. And it's like, one, I think that, that should probably be more concise, like you said. And two, I think that it should try to be like laser focused on like, you know, what are the um, you know, policies that we're actually proposing and justifying those. Like if we're gonna spend half of our budget planting trees, then you want to explain with some statistics what, like, what is the return on investment of planting trees? But like, if we're not going to be doing much in terms of, um, you know, some of these suggestions, then we don't really need like a, you know, pages of justification for it. Well, well, that's a great question. Um, do we know what we're going to propose about our urban forests and urban streams? I mean, how specific do you want to be? I mean, generically, we all think more tree canopy is a good idea. That having a more resilient tree population is a good idea. And actually knowing what trees we have is a good idea. I mean, do you want, do you want to go deeper than that? Well, no, but I, I guess I'm just kind of piggyback on Matt's point, who uh, um, mentions that we, we're we going to need statistics to back that up. Um, I guess that's a lot of what's what's in that upper part. I, I, I guess I could condense that. Or maybe we could just say, we could reference the tree board report. And, uh, Absolutely. I think we should reference it and also maybe have a little paragraph about the importance of that report as being very specific to our city. And then- And in the electronic document, we can link to it. Yeah. And then link we can link to, to the revision. Can, yeah. We that would that would be very compacting. Yeah. Appendix also mm -hmm. at the bottom for people who are okay. So, but at the same time, I think there is a value in having the actual raw data that were in an appendix. So whether it's the 2011 or the 2023 one or both, both we should yeah. have one in there. Yeah. I, yeah, I agree. Okay. So what is what is it that we want to remember about this? 
we're, we're gonna we're gonna basically use uh, the, the 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 we're we're gonna compact this to being more about referencing the tree board report rather than reporting from or 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 listing from the report itself. And as Matt said, also just uh, cite uh, citing the points that are directly relevant to things that we're going to propose. Yeah, I, I mean, you made a good point. That's like we haven't decided what we're going to do with regards to this yet. Um, and, you know, I again, this gets into whether the plan is going to be more of a like, we think that we should generally do this or like we're going to implement these specific policies. I think that, Brian, like you've got the, the knowledge base to suggest, like if you were to suggest one or two, like, you know, specific policies, like, okay, we want to do this. What would what comes to mind for you? Oh, you, you know, just just based. Well, to me, it's like don't cut any damn trees down. Uh, but no, it'd be more. Yeah, you'd have to, uh, particularly take um, significant trees. I think a lot more. You really give them a lot more value, and and I think one of the things that is also coming out that I think would be a very important thing to add, which I think the tree board is also supporting is significant groves of trees or, 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 you know, groups of trees together um, is also very important. But overall tree canopy itself should, should be maintained. We shouldn't, we, we should probably advocate for not dropping below our, our present day percentage and trying to increase the percentage of canopy cover. Brian, could I ask you something quickly here? Have you uh, been aware that there was at one time a tree inventory in the city? It was put together by one of our former arborists. And that was kind of a plan that the city was going after, you know, to keep the correct number of trees that, that he suggested uh, thriving in the city. And I don't know whatever happened to that. I, I'm not. I mean, that, that, are you saying that's different from the actual tree board report? Absolutely. Okay. I, I don't. I've never heard of it. Yeah. Uh huh. I can see if I can figure out what happened to because yeah. I know it existed because I was working with him on it at the time. So I know there was a big report. It was made, you know, given to the council and the mayor, and uh, it was there as as you know something concrete to go by. Yeah, please, please, if you can find it, that would be fantastic. I'll give it a shot. Okay. Can I ask? Can I ask just kind of a fundamental framing question? Because I know I missed the last meeting. I apologize, but, but just taking a step back so that I understand, because this is the this outline of this document has changed a lot since the previous discussions. We were going to model it after Ken Moore, which obviously we're not doing anymore. So I just um, is the audience of this document the city of Lake Forest Park, um, the people who are going to implement it, is it the public? Is it all of the above? Like what is what is the primary target audience that this is being written for? I believe that our primary audience is the city council. And once the city council approves it, we become the people who are doing implementation. Okay. Okay. I just, because I think that goes to the, the kind of some of the heart of some of these questions about like how much background, you know, do we provide and, and how much additional context and, um, or do we just reference these other reports? So it sounds like for the city council, it can be more of a, certainly obviously on the, the tree report, <laughs> they've all read that. Um, so that could be condensed and, and more consolidated. But if it's information, like I know I was reading through the stream section earlier, then if that's not information that they necessarily have in advance, then maybe there needs to be more context, but. Any questions, comments? Uh, just to Jessica's point, I, I don't think I could please correct me if anybody knows differently, but I don't think there's been any analysis of our urban creeks and urban streams and what they do and their importance and how much we have and and what their state of health is, other than what you know Stewardship Foundation has been doing. 
So I, I don't know if, if the, yeah, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even know if this council's got any information on that. King County has done studies on our streets. I know this. And they did, for instance, the biological inventory of benthic invertebrates mm -hmm. at the mouth, I think, of uh, Lion Creek. Um, but, you know, I, yeah, that was years ago. It was, it was it was a decade at least ago. So I don't know if they do it that regularly. It's my my problem with their stuff. I think I think Department of of Natural Resources actually does a, usually a yearly testing in those same spots. So, okay. but I'm uh, again. I don't think it's ever been in a report to the council. I, I has it, Tracy? Do you know if you guys have ever been given a report on that? Uh, if you look on the uh, city's uh, GIS website, the maps site, they actually have, I believe, one of the maps shows basically where they sample. I didn't see any uh, metadata about how often they sampled, but at least the points are there. Okay, we're. I, I hear we're talking about streams in Lake Forest Park. Is that right? Is this the? Is this? Where is this from, Brian? Uh, it's from a, a, a bunch of different sources that I gathered, as well as information that I had on hand from what the Stewardship Foundation and the Stream Keepers have collected. And I've also assimilated a lot of the data from the Department of Natural Resources and the Department of Ecology into those report into this kind of report here. So it's it's kind of a conglomeration of everything. But once again, I can now that I, I've got a clear idea that we really just want to reference these kinds of things and condense these, um, I'm, I'm happy to, to work on that. Okay, great. Um, so what we're saying here is we want to um, consolidate this, right? Is that right? Consolidate, reference, and put in appendages, I guess, or? Well, at least the data anyway. Yeah. Um, and then we get into the symptoms of climate change on urban streams. Is that all part of this? Yeah, no, that that's I, I can I can take these three sections here and and I can work on that. Okay. Let me just say I could not figure out this <laughs> beyond my capacity. Okay. So but what I'll, 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 you know what? I'm gonna get rid of it just for that reason. <laughs> yes, I'm, figure it out. I'm, going I'm with to... you, Sarah. I hate conceptual models. They make me <laughs> crazy. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't okay. Okay. Well, it's mostly because there's no verbs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so when we talked about the implement, this is this is where the implementation plan section is um uh and I, and again, I want to encourage you to put notes in the side. Uh, if there's an issue that you want to add, please, we can just add them. But um, uh, I'm going to go back to the old methodology here of reading through it. Um, so uh, let's see. The Climate Action Committee sees itself as a critical component in the implementation of the Climate Action Plan. The City of Lake Forest Park needs to continue to allocate staff resources to help ensure the implementation of the climate action plan and may require additional resources from departments. We think of departments. We think there are three things that we need um, to do in terms of oversight and accountability. And those are developing recommendations for programs, practices, and priorities to make sure that the biennial capital budget includes some, I think that word is, right? Yes. Some. Uh, some ways to monitor emissions and redu emissions reductions and evaluate necessary step next step to prepare some kind of annual some kind of report on an annual basis to the city council. So the question is, is that what we want to do in terms of the implementation? Is it well, yes, what a wonderful idea. Let's go to the next one. Well, yes, it's a well so, but this is that's just one part of it, right? So that's out. That's just the allocation of staff. Yeah. Okay. So, how do we approach? The, this is a question about how do we want to approach this section. So, let's think about that as we use. If we're using shoreline plan as a guide, um, the, a person is needed in Lake Forest Park as they are in Kenmore and shoreline. 
um, to do these things. And when we talked with the mayor in our presentation, we said we thought we were going to need staff. And he said, tell us what you need. So I, I don't think that's out of line to say this is what we need. And well, we think somebody from a um, from a uh, an employed person would do is oversee future greenhouse gas inventories and monitor emissions re reductions and evaluate progress towards planned targets. Establishing performance indicators and reporting to the city council on the progress and challenges associated with plan implementation. Developing recommendations for new and ongoing programs, services, practices, and priorities related to reducing emissions, increasing sequestration, and improving resilience. Ensuring optimal coordination between the city departments and integration with other uh, planning and planning effects. I was very confused about where we were because there's another section that has this that's all deleted oh. and there's no heading for this. Okay, okay. Now, I, now I understand. Good. Okay. The man who organizes things is that's good. Um, so we're talking about strategies and actions that could be a framework and um, uh, what you can do what the city can do and how we can do things together. We, I'm not sure we've used this framework, but we might wanna look at it and see if it works as we look at the priority areas. So the, the strategies and actions are what you can do, utilize federal. And as you, uh, Miriam, were you thinking that this is an individual, what you, yeah. as any individual? Maybe we should yeah. say what individuals could do. Are we? So we're gearing this though towards the city council. Right. So we um I think when I was, you know, so I think Shoreline and Ken Moore, they all have their implementation, their they have their whole climate action plan on their website. So the general public has access to it. So I think we need to think of it eventually in that light as it's a resource for the city, for for the members of our community. Yeah. And so that's how I was thinking about it. So I apologize because I was not at the meetings. And so I realized I stepped into this and I may have like gotten the wrong perception no. of what I should be doing here. <laughs> no, I think, I think you're absolutely right. And okay. I think that we had talked about, um, well, well, I meant that the primary audience was the city council because they, they have to say yay or nay to it. Once it's passed, that becomes a document that we use to move towards implementation. So it is a public document, it'll be on the, it'll be on the website, we'll use it as a, if we're going to, after funding, we would reference that document. So we do want it as a living document and we do want people to read it. I, I hope I didn't. So just to be clear, what I put down here are just the kernel, the starting ideas that there's a lot more that would go in these categories that I didn't, that this is just as far as I got in terms of trying to sort out what was useful from Shoreline's plan that seemed consistent with what was being presented here. So that's kind of where I was going. Um, so before we move on in the section above there with what that staff member would do. So it doesn't have anything about um, uh, education, outreach events, community events, or I mean, I guess it says ongoing, new and ongoing programs, services, practices. I guess I'm just, it's unclear to me if that if continued education and outreach, you know, within the community, if that would be. Or... I think that's a good thing to add. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, continued education and outreach. Within... In the community, yeah, to, to, of these strategies and actions that were, you know, on climate, yeah, on actions they can take. Feel on on the side if we are skipping things over, but I'm happy to put that in. Is that sort of a general consensus we have had that? I was saying that that was amazing that you managed to do those five bullet points without mentioning the word grants whatsoever. <laughs> uh, okay, you want that in there, buddy? <laughs> We're not going to pay for it out of the city budget, let me tell you that. Okay. Um, so what is the others? Seek and yeah, seek and manage. Seek and manage appropriate grants. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? You know, you guys can write in the margins. I don't have to be the only one writing. I'm just saying. Okay. 
<laughs> I, do have, I do have a broader question, which is um, this section was entirely under implementation, right? Yep. Where does strategies and actions for is that a, They're coming. Is, is, it a, is, oh. it, is it the same level or is it this within? In my mind, they're, they're within implementation. So they are strategies and actions related to implementation. Okay. Then one thing I would suggest is at the very beginning of implementation, you lay out very clearly these three things that the implementation is about. And then we never talk about them again. And it's up to people to connect their own dots about which of those three things we're doing. So, you know, I'm thinking that broadly, I have an organizational structure there, which are these three things that we're planning to do, and everything should fall under these three things. Okay, so the three things that we the three things we need to do in terms of in terms of oversight and accountability. And I've lost my voice. Yeah. We think there are three things we need to do in terms of oversight and accountability. Yeah. Yeah. And those are let's just do one. Is this an introductory paragraph yeah. to the whole thing, or is this just for us? It's an introductory paragraph, right? So we're saying that we think this. Should we just say that there are these things? Yes, we should be more definitive. <laughs> Unless it's just to remind us that this is what. We're doing here. Well, I think that might be part of like going back through the whole document, yeah. making yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah, it just was unclear to me okay. whether this is part of the right. document this or if this is just a note to us. Okay, uh, develop recommendations for program practices and priorities to make sure the biennial capital is ready to learn. Mission production resist two is evaluate necessary next steps. Right. And three is prepare some kind of report on annual raises. I thought, okay. Did I get wrong? I thought the biennial budget was a standalone thing, but it looks like you're right, you're, you're right, yeah. Okay, those are just sort of right. things to hang this right. reorganization of this on. So that if you use that as your organizing principle, then under one, literally say something like hire a climate action plan manager or you know whatever you need the uh, staff member to be because i think that's what council would be looking for is these very concrete things that they could act on okay so I, tell me what i don't understand what you mean. so you have these three yeah, uh, things that we're going to do right right using those then as subheadings then Organize all the strategies and, and other things to fit under one of those three categories. Which okay. I'm just gonna pull them out. This is not right, but just I'm not sure that this is gonna work because let me I, can I hold this for a second and then go on and there's this thing about what we think this guy ought to this person ought to do, and then let me just say we talked about strategies and actions and then i'm going to show you the whole thing and then we're going to come back and talk about it that the priority areas are transportation the built environment zero waste solid waste municipal, All right, municipal operations natural environments ecosystems and sequestration and i don't know what this is solutions to mitigate Okay. That, that that's that's the uh second part of or the the actions that i had developed sarah that i think maybe mimi just put because it's all part of that but that's all part of again of going to be condensed so we can so it'll be, so we'll do that so so those are the those are the categories that we were working with and those are the categories that are pretty much everywhere in everybody's uh plan across the region so in transportation, we said we want to reduce carbon emissions from transportation in Lake Forest Park it, to reduce uh, carbon uh, emissions from transportation. Lake Forest Park needs to fo focus on four strategies. One, reduce community wide driving. And the action is drive less through safe streets program to encourage walking and biking. Residents need to feel that the streets are safe for them and their children. Action, another action is under this reduce community uh, wide driving is support uh, transit. Metro uh, 
King County Metro is committed to expanding its fleet to non-fossil fuels. The city needs to figure out ways to encourage the use of transit by its residents. Suggestions have included, of course, park and ride lot, but also a jitney that might pick people up and then the expanded use of Lyft and Uber to get people to transportation hubs. And we saw that in the survey where people weren't, couldn't figure out how to use the bus. Right. So there was something like that. You might jump in here? No, please. Okay, so this is exactly right. So these are basically literally actions that city council could take if you phrase them the right way. Yeah. So like, for instance, that first point you made is enact the Safe Streets project or program or whatever it's called. Right, because we already have that on the books. Um, the second one would be um, enact legislation encouraging the or, or funding a jitney. You know, so 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 make the uh, make the verbs more active. <laughs> okay, um, the city needs to. Yeah, because you pretty much got to hit us over the head with uh, stuff. I mean, yeah, you know, suggesting broadly. I, we we tend to ignore, you know, honestly. <laughs> so if you say do this, do this, we kind of look at it, and we can disagree with you. But the fact is that basically you made your point very clear. Okay, I, I put this in the wrong place. So we're the comment here here is that they need to be right. We need to. Oh, oh where? How come I can't? Oh, how did you like that? <laughs> nice. Right. Yeah. Um, what happened? There you are. Okay. Oh, no, that's okay. But uh, I know how to get there from here. Okay. Here we are. Okay. Now, why can't I make that? Um, whoops, I lost it again. You just had it. Just go back to that one tab you had. I'm sorry, people. This is just exactly what happened, right? Oh, there it is. Now I have. What is this? <laughs> no. You can stop sharing. Maybe maybe it'll yeah. Oh, you please. Can. You don't want to see what? What is this guy with the EVS? Uh, I was going to buy an EV. Right now, just okay. back here. Yeah. Screen share. Okay. Now. Oh, you seem to have closed that particular window. Okay. Just go ahead and open, open it up again on your desktop. Then. All right. Uh, okay, close the sharing. Okay, speak among yourselves. Uh, let's see. I'm going to stop sharing so you don't see what I'm doing. As an internet person. Uh, let's see, Google Docs. But does everybody see what I'm trying to say, which is basically that there needs to be more action verbs in the implementation plan? Because just you know, sort of vague suggestions will essentially be ignored. I so, agree with you, mm -hmm. and I think that's a task for the like you know going through and making sure the voice that you know once we have agreed what we're going to put in, right? It's like make sure the tone all matches and stuff. I don't think we need to like pick the verbs right now. That's fair. That's fair. Mm -hmm. But but you see what I'm saying, right? Is basically yeah, you know, you know, whatever editor comes back to the thing should be easily able to do that. Yeah. Right? So we should have notes right. somewhere in the comments saying like, right. make sure that these verbs are active. Right. Okay. Can you put there, Matt? Yeah. Are we in the section for what the the town will do then? Are we are we separating them out by individual town and vote? You do that in every single. Uh, so it's not. When I went in and did this, I didn't incorporate all these ideas. I just sort of tried to put the things that maybe we wanted to think about together. And I tried to create these action because of the city council that they want action. So let's give them action. And so yeah. just I was just separating it and putting the ideas that you guys already had sort of in that framework. It's a start. It's not. Yeah, no, I think that's yeah. great. I'm just wondering what the overall organization is and I'm having trouble can't quite see enough on the side, so I'm not quite sure. It's not, it's not th that individuals and the city and what we can, is not there yet. That needs to be developed. Okay, so what we're saying is, is this right? That in each of these sections, we want to have these three categories that we've talked about before, individuals. So in, in the Shoreline one, they, they call that out at the beginning and they kind of focus people and they kind of summarize 
what's in the rest of it in that section of what you can do. And so they get people thinking about it there and then they go into the details below. So I don't know how we want to do it, but that was the, the how they were doing it. So um, yeah. So in the in like transportation, it would all be there, but above it, it would say, you guys need to drive less, you know, basically, you know, kind of honing it down to um, the nitty gritty. So that's one way to do it. But I think getting the details below and then coming back and saying, okay, what are the individual actions and, and calling it all out? It's just a different way of organizing the information. So, um. okay. Um, so the next one is, um, this is again, this is about uh, transportation. And the action is uh, build for the missing middle. And this is prioritize dense mixed use, how transit oriented development and affordable housing. That's the language from the Kenmore and adopt the missing middle uh, housing policies and codes for the new development that allow for a broader housing type and single family zoning, especially near transit. That's from the Burian one. This issue about middle housing is gonna be uh, where people get um, the crazies, right? Yeah. But what I think it's important to pause and say, do we support this notion of building for the missing middle? in the forest park is a transportation strategy. It's it's the strategy that Kenmore, I mean Kenmore, uh, I know for sure Shoreline is used there. They rezoned around their transit oriented development. So it's a really town center. Okay. Is that anything you like? Uh, strategy two is accelerate uh, electric vehicle adoption and the um, action is moved to electric vehicles. Over the course of the next several years, the city's municipal fleet needs to become all electric. The city needs to work with work on developing infrastructure for electric bikes, charging stations, and charging stations. Uh, support the educational opportunities for electrical electrification of vehicles. That makes no sense. S support educational opportunities. Okay. And I think uh, what I'm seeing here is kind of a, it, I, I think it's what uh, I think uh, um, Mimi was saying was there's a stylistic difference here. Um, the last thing she said were all actions that the city could take. Mm -hmm. And I'd say put those up front, right? Because those are the things you want to have action on. So in other words, you know, instead of burying it under three levels of headings, put these actions at the very top. So we have the, the actions are, if you look here, you have a strategy and then you have an action and an action. And right. What are you saying we should do? It's put the actions first as the top level and then do the justifications below, you know, as subheadings for those. Uh, I don't understand it. So you so, say, in, under transportation, you'd say require multi, you just list these as policies, right. do this, do this, do this, do this. And then underneath it, you'd say why you want to do it. Right. How, how, how is it basically going to help the planet? Okay. I mean, and again, I'm just throwing this out there because basically, um, you know, there's a, as you saw from different city strategies, the other way works too. It's, it's just fine. I think we should try to maintain the uniform kind of way of doing this. And if you're going to do it the way that it's written here as, then it may be the case that we don't want to basically break up um, in that first implementation sense into those three ways in which the implementation is going to work. In other words, we have to say, you know, we have to um, write about our organization in the same way that the report is going to be organized. Okay. okay. So maybe what we need to do is come back to that introductory paragraph. I, I think the important thing, uh, and stop me if you disagree, is to get the content in there and then we can massage it in a way that sure. structures, is that right? Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to plow ahead. Like, I'm just seeing us all as editors in about three months. Going, Why the heck do we do it this way? Do it this way? Yeah. Yes. Yes. As I've said before, my senior editor told me the need for sex is the, uh, the need to edit is greater than the need for sex. So, um, <laughs> we, once again, Okay, the second area is the built environment. And the strategies we're talking about are electric, electricity, space, and water heating for new and existing buildings. And the action is provide consistent and ongoing public education about alternatives to gas. 
These include collaborative efforts with the five North End cities following the lead of the East Side Cities Program on Electrification, public forums on the Inflation Reduction Act, rebates, and how to access the rebates. Uh, strategy two, increase energy efficiency of new and existing buildings. Action, support local, leg local legislation requiring all new homes to be electric. You're doing that, right, Tracy? Well, um, not single family houses, oh. but you're, you're on the right track. Okay, support the county and state state initiatives to encourage building code revisions to encourage energy efficient, provide information about rebates to the existing home and businesses to add energy efficiency. Um, strategy three, increase renewable energy generation and access. Action, uh, support the increased efficiency of the electric, electric grid through solar installations, community solar project and the use of battery technology. I don't know. Yeah, this is not going to reduce CO2 emissions, but it does support the grid. Do, does, does this belong in this report or not? Yes. I'm getting some nods, so I'm moving on. Please add a note to the side if you have something. Mandate new green building codes. Uh, require new buildings to have electric, electric heating, cooling, and cooking. And what do we Redundancy here, requiring new residential buildings to be fitted for solar. This is a question um, of what Tracy added. You should put this in the note, Tracy. But uh, Tracy added maybe we map for those places in the city where solar makes sense. And if there's new building in that area, the roofs have to be. Um, so it's a couple of six, the roofs have to be able to support solar. That's what Kirkland says. Uh, require existing building codes for the reduction of parking requirements and shared driveways. So to illegal in Lake Forest Park under the current code, you have a shared driveway. Right? Isn't that what's going on in the, that big thing on 26th or 185th, Brian? Why? Why is it illegal? Just in the code. It's not illegal to have a shared driveway. It just has to be a certain. It has the the way I can't. It's hard to the way that it comes into the property has to be an equal division. It can't be coming in on one person's property and then entering into another person's property. It's all based on. It's all based on ordinances. So the idea here is that we. Well, if you want to have green building codes, the notion is you would reduce the requirements for parking right. and allow shared driveways. Okay, we well, need to talk about that. Uh, re retrofitting existing building. Uh, encourage residents to plan for retrofitting of, of their personal buildings. This means planning for new heat pumps, electric stoves, and electric heating. The city needs to collaborate with the North End cities to provide incentives. We said that in actions. Adopt or exceed the Washington State Clean uh, Building Acts to advance energy performance standards for new and innovative and existing buildings. Um, that's just what the people are encouraging, being encouraged to do. Uh, okay, so that's a section on, on the built environment. Are there things that we're missing that we need to add to the built environment? This is where we are. We, we've said there are two main areas where we have emissions, that's transportation and the built environment. So where are there suggestions here about what we, are there additional? Yeah. Um, especially for multifamily housing, uh, mm -hmm. require charging stations for electric vehicles. Require the that's... option for charging electrical vehicles. Okay. Provide. And even in a single family home, you know, getting a 230 volt outlet near the driveway area is really easy when you're building a house and much more challenging when you're doing it later and the panel's already in. 
right. and full. <laughs> so provide multifamily facilities for charging stations and change. What are you saying, Andy? Uh, well, actually, I think it um, for for all buildings uh, require that they be wired to accommodate electric vehicle charging stations near driveways and parking areas. So that's not worded elegantly for a private. Mm -hmm. Residents, it would be, um, you know, properly wired for a high voltage outlet. For a multifamily complex, it would be setting the complex up to permit a person who drives their car in to be able to charge overnight. Yes, I was doing some doorbelling up in Palatine, and they they said there's no charging station, yeah. and they said that what they suggested you do is run an electrical cord out your window. Yeah, that's <laughs> literally what people would have to do is drop a cord out of their window down to right. their car and plug in that way. And yeah, that's assuming they don't need 220. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's very slow. Yeah. You you can do it with 115, but it's very slow. Okay, are there other things in this category, which we have called as the built environment? Is this the place that you want to sit, or is transportation a place where you want, you mentioned safe streets, mm -hmm. but more broadly, uh, just basically making a more walkable environment. Right, so I'm talking about connecting the parks up with linkages, connecting the Burke Gilman to the uh, uh, to the inner urban trail, you know, that kind of stuff. Okay, that's not the built environment, right? Okay. So is it um, is it transportation? It is because one of the forms of transportation should be bicycle and foot. Right. Okay. All right. So we're saying uh, another action is. Um, uh, what um, um, trails right. and yeah. sidewalks? Infrastructure projects, basically. Yeah, because Safe Streets only takes you so far. So, yeah. okay. infrastructure projects to encourage walking and bicycle. And, and scootering. And scooter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a word I just learned. Has there been any survey or anything to assess like what the priority would be for that kind of project? It seems like there is a lot of need for sidewalks all over the town, but for if we're asking for action on that, it seems like an action that needs to be done is figuring out how even get started with that and how you would prioritize things. Yeah, I think that Safe Street study does that. I don't know. Yeah. That's good. We can look at that. And, and isn't the Parks Board about to start a survey on uh, something about basically prioritizing things like that? No. No. Okay. Okay. So this is good. Another one. Okay. So the built environment. Is the built environment also things like um, lawns and tools, like outdoor, or is that the yeah. yeah, The built environment is more the buildings themselves. The natural environment is more the whether you even have a lawn or whether you have some sort of a um, more naturalized landscape. I think we put. I think we put this into the net. I skipped over to the natural environment, the ecosystems and sequestration, mm -hmm. and canopy, public education on the value of trees. Uh, maybe not. Sorry, I, I I was I was condensing. I might have gotten rid of it. Oh, okay. What <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> okay. no, I'm just kidding. What are we looking for again? I'm sorry. What? I, I missed it. <laughs> oh, I was kind of joking. What what did, what did we what were you looking for, Sarah? I don't know. I've lost my mind. Conversion of lawns. Okay. No, yes. I didn't power get rid of that. Tools. It was and tools, tools, power tools. There was something about power tools somewhere. Yeah. No, I didn't get rid of that. Okay. Let's, I'm going to write down over. Uh, I'm going to write somewhere. 
Somebody, is that part of electrification? So moving from gas to electric stuff? Yes, it is. So where but is that? Cool. Built environment. Right. I, yeah, I think it would probably be under built environment, yes. if not its own section. Yes. Okay. Okay, so uh, we're just going to throw in here, right? Uh, what is it? What's the, what's the action? I think there's a couple. So one would be electrify lawn outdoor yard. Natural yard. Yes. No. What? Natural yard. Okay. Um, so maybe that encompasses things like developing rain gardens and um, you know native plant gardening. I, I you might want to spell some of that yeah. out somewhere. I think it's down here uh, in ecosystems, right? Maintain canopy, urban forest health. Um, why do I keep thinking it's here? Mm -hmm. It seems like it could, well, it feels like it goes in two different places. If you're electrifying the gear and doing these other, um, changing your landscaping and things like that, there seems like, given the way this is organized. Um, yeah, it could just be like, there's like a tool, like home improvement tools too. Oh. Okay, Elect so we put in up here, electrify lawn, out lawn and outdoor equipment using natural yard waste. And this was under the section of the built environment. Um, and they're and they're saying that there's, uh, Mimi, help me, what were you saying? Um, just if you go to the um, ecosystems and things, and that's where you, you um, work on the gardening aspect of it. But, you know, what kinds of things you plant, your, whether you have it. it okay. Grass. Put that there for a minute. Yeah. Like, okay, I'm going to go back up. But you can, yeah. What? You might need to add a different, another strategy, is what I'm saying under those. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Let's see. You talked about, let's see. Uh, did we talk about this? Uh, okay. Mandate, we did this. Retrofit existing buildings. Okay. The next category is solid waste. Uh, and it says reduce, the strategy is reduce the per capita waste generation, especially food. And the actions are provide expanded education on what can go in various bins and residential recycling and composting. And strategy two is to increase the diversion rate and uh, access, access to recycling and composting services. I, I think one of the actions is mandate this is a city mandate um, uh, recycling services. I only say that because my neighbor only does garbage. Oh, is that it? I didn't realize that was, was it not mandated. It's don't free. It is. It's free, but they don't want to separate it. They put they everything in the separate. garbage. They put um, everything in the garbage. Yeah, I thought a lot of cities. I, Mandate, yeah, that's like, yeah. 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 yeah, but yeah, maybe they're just not using the recycle bin. They don't have one, I'm telling you. Don't tell me, it's not my neighbor, it's on public things. Right? They buried it in their basement. The recycle, <laughs> <laughs> no, they have the zero, they have zero uh lawn, so they don't have a lot of yard, yard waste. Um, so oh, they don't do yard waste either, they don't have yard waste, they don't compost, they just have garbage. Okay. Is that so? All right. Uh, is there anything else? Uh, okay. Then, then those were the strategies. Uh, these were increased composting and recycling. I'm not sure how these really are. These a strategy under solid waste. I'm not sure. Provide expanded education on what can go in various bins in residential recycling and compost. Work with Republic Services to focus on multi-family. Schools, 
businesses and to ensure proper um, composting and recycling. Um, examine the Republic contract when the, I don't know when this is, this contract renewal comes up to make sure it provides for mandatory recycling and composting and encourage the providers to move from natural gas vehicles to electric vehicles. Uh, evaluate commercial recycling and composting. Ensure that uh, commercial and restaurants are actually composting and recycling. We've heard that from a lot of people that they're, and we see it in the city, and I go to the parks, there are three bins and they're all garbage. Yeah, and I'm not working on that right now. Good work. Yes. Um, so, um, okay, we increase recycling and composting. I'm going to continue. Uh, Support the Lake Forest Park Farmers Market as a source of sustainable local food. Uh, I don't know where that sits. Strategy one, this is kind of a hodgepodge, I think. Um, strategy one, reduce waste from city purchasing. And the actions are evaluate sustainable purchasing policies and add bonuses to contracts for the use of projects and products that reduce greenhouse gas emissions and switch from digital to internal uh, and external paper use when possible, and continue to support public awareness at events like Green Fair, Picnic in the Park, Garden Tour, and other events. It's all about reducing stuff. Okay. What else? Is there something else we ought to do? This is a, one of the things that is not interesting about this category is it touches everybody, even my neighbor. You know, I mean, everybody's got garbage. They've got almost everybody's got green waste, and they've got everybody's got recycling. So the strategies we use have the potential of engaging people. So is there something we're missing here that we should put in? That's so stuck? one of the the trade offs. Um, several years ago, our yard waste was picked up every other week. And that meant a truck came by every other week instead of a truck coming by every week. So the trade-off we have is we can have yard waste picked up every week, but it's fewer units. And at some point, you know, the, it, it is good to get the yard waste to a proper composting facility so that it's managed effectively. Um, but the trade-off is every time a truck drive through every single street in Lake Forest Park every week, that's a carbon output. The simple management of having trucks go to every single door every week to pick up our yard waste is a certain climate output. Um, so we don't do this, examine the contract. This would be a contract issue, right? Yeah, and, and you know, it was, um, I'm sure there's a history as to why it was changed, and it was probably due to public desire to have more frequent yard waste pickup in smaller amounts. And um, that may actually be, you know, I, w one of the things I hope to get is whether we're actually, because of the efficiency of picking it up all the time, you can actually do it with, say, fewer truck runs. Um, and you have the, I, I think there's a real practical effort, you know, in some households trying to store 10 units for two weeks at the foot of the driveway, puts it out into the main road <laughs> after a while. So, uh, you know, it, it's just something we need to look at is, is examine the trade-offs and see whether or not uh, the current management program works. I know that uh, when we lived in the UK and Cambridge, they were picking up solid waste every two weeks. And that was a public health nuisance, especially in the summer. That was just vile. Uh, so examine the trade-offs of pickup of weekly. When they went to picking up weekly, somewhere in there, they also took our food garbage. They take food waste in your yard waste of, of certain sorts. and I. Yeah. Right. So I think that if you don't pick it up every week, they might not want to do that. I don't yeah, know. No, I think that's entirely, you know, I, I don't know what the basis of the discussion yeah. was, but that could well be it. Because having lived in a community that picked up the food waste every two weeks, yeah, I don't think we want to go there. 
Well, Seattle does uh, picks up garbage every other week in some neighborhoods. They're doing it as an experiment now. So we will have some data to look at. So a, a comment that I had put in there, and I don't know if it's the right place or not, was about, um, because it, this was where the Lake Forest Park Farmers Market was, um, just about talking about the difference between plant-based eating and meat. So the, you know, there's a lot of statistics out there, like if everybody, you know, didn't eat meat one day a week, for example, how much that could reduce greenhouse gas emissions. So I'm not sure if it really goes in solid waste or not, but um, just since the farmer's market thing was there about the sustainable local food source, that's why I put the comment. Yeah, I, I really like that comment. I was thinking about, you know, whether we should add a consumption because, you know, like we talked about solid waste is like such a small part of the pie, but it's like, if you look at the consumption-based inventory, it's like potentially more gains to be made by having people think about like, you know, ordering stuff from Amazon less frequently and like, you know, and, and I think that the, like the meatless should definitely go in there as well. There was a section at the very end where some of these came in. What can you do? Um, telecommunicate, use transportation, walk, scooter. When there's, um, get, uh, there's, eat, don't eat meat and eggs. Okay. Someone, I think, the, but the question about where it goes and this issue of consumption is um, in some of the uh, reduced meat and dairy consumption is right here. Um, so. Well, I, you want to go back so here. as far as tone, I think, you know, people have addressed like, oh, should we have separate sections for what individuals can do and what the city can do? And I think, um, you know, as we discussed, it makes sense for the audience for this report to be the city council. Mm -hmm. And so if we want individuals to do something kind of like people have put in the actions, it's like it shouldn't be like what you can do. It should be like develop a program to encourage people to do this, right. you know. Like it should be phrased as we are talking to the city. And if we want individuals to do something, then we're gonna have programs to do that. You know, I, I think that the, what you can do is great as kind of like a, a little section, maybe at the top, maybe for citizens who happen to see like, oh, let me read this. But I don't think that's a substitute for like, you know, if we think that people consuming less meat is going to have an impact on the climate, it shouldn't just be like, a little checklist it should be like the city is going to develop an outreach program to encourage people to eat less meat right okay so it's a really that's putting a lot on the city though like right but the maybe point. the city could make a document that's kind of like a climate action plan with information like that but i think if we want to have the city in charge of like putting out programs for every single thing like this. Well, I mean, that's, what's the alternative? Like if we give something to the city council and it says every homeowner should do this, the city council is like, well, we can't make those people do that. All you can do is, you know. Right, that's suggest. why I think that the readership maybe should be broader than just the city council for this document. Or if it's not, that there should be a second document or some adaptation of it for uh, citizens, mm -hmm. because yeah, I mean, just a you lot could do there. that, but that's not different from saying like develop a program to increase awareness of these th things. It's like develop a document to you're okay. changing the word program to document. But then you wouldn't spell out all of these things in this document. You're no. saying so you would just say develop a document to educate the citizens on how to be better and then skip everything like this out of this document so I'm gonna, yeah <laughs> I, so i think your, both your points are really well taken and i think you're absolutely right we're making a false dichotomy saying we're either going to do one kind of document or another kind of document one kind of audience or another kind of audience i think the key thing is this document is for the council but the point is that nobody's going to read it outside. I mean, it'll be like a couple dozen people tops reading this. And so what we need then is to develop something like we saw in those surveys, 
some, you know, what's the top 10 things I can do, right? Mm -hmm. And so the point is that I think Matt's point about developing a document that basically is something like that could be one of our strategies on here, right? And that way we still address what you're trying to get to people. But at the same time, you know, I imagine that the document is having over the 3,000 words, right? Okay. This is going to be way over 3,000 words. So, so the point is basically making something that's easily digestible. Somebody can look at it. They can do something. Yeah, feel good about it. So, or a video yeah. instead of a document. Yeah. All right, I am going to charge ahead because that's what I. Okay. Did. So one more thing under solid waste. So, um, the we haven't really talked about, and I don't know what can or can't be done about this from a city level, but there's a lot of you know junk mail and mailers and you know, and I don't know if. I don't know if a city has any control over those kinds of like there's I think about the one that's like got all the coupons in it that comes that's locally I don't know there's enough just a number of things that you know we get in the mail that are that nobody asks for um yeah so I don't know the answer but on that just because we could do a program about how to get rid of it I don't think the city does City has no control over the post office and, and stuff out, but individuals can get on a list. And... Sarah? Yeah. At one point, there was something, it, it happened a number of years ago, that you could fill out some form for the post office requesting that they do not deliver that to you. And I know it was it happened a lot of years ago. We We did it several times, and for quite a long time, we did not get any. And then it started happening again. But there was some program, I assumed it was from the post office. So did you see what Matt added, uh, raise awareness of no junk mail list? Right. I'd like to figure this out. I think that's a great suggestion. And we have seven minutes left. Yes. Um, I'm going to suggest, because what we're doing right now is we're kind of trying to write this by committee. And like you suggested, like our, our takeaway from this meeting should not be like, we're gonna write the whole document like this. Right. It should be deciding what are the work groups gonna be? Because like we, you know, once the things are actually written, we can kind of go through and do this like we did with the survey, but it's like, this is not really in the state yet where it's worth us all reading through it. Okay. So uh, this is what I think we need to do. We need to, decide, take each of these, uh, is what I think we're suggesting, is take each of these implementation sections and get a committee to make it a little more fulsome. But we need to figure out what the, don't we need to create a, a uh, sort of an outline of how we want it done? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. No, this juncture, you said no. I mean, just let's like get the content in. Right. Just get the content, content in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, I'm, I'm just going to do two things. I'm going to look, just say, I'm going to read through this. Municipal operations, invest in transition to electric fleet, investing in energy audits for all city-owned buildings, financing, invest in financing and grants to bring city buildings to highest efficiency, invest in energy lighting. Natural environment, uh, we've talked a lot about those. So that, I think with your community resilience and preparedness is another strategy. So what I'm looking for now then, if I get this wrong, is I'd like to get group a group a group of people who would work on looking at these strategies and make them as fulsome as they need to be and come back with a revision to them. So is that right? Is that what we want to well, do? You're saying have like a small part of the committee go through all of them, or no. that was kind of like pair it up and pair do up. different sections. Pair up and do okay. different sections. Yeah. So you only have to take one of them. So who's so whose name is being called for transportation? How many different ones do we have? Uh, I don't know. I think there's like seven. Seven, yeah. I'd say. Transportation is a lot of fun. I'll do that. Who's doing it with me? I'll do it with you. Okay. And um, I'm going to call you, Hannah, and set up a meeting. Yep. Yeah. So 
I'll put in an asterisk by my name. Okay, think about anybody who wants to work on the built environment, buildings. Since they've already kind of working on that. Yeah. Tracy. And Matt. And Matt. And who's going to call that meeting? Um, I'll send you a note. Okay. Uh, sorry, Master. Okay. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Consumption, this whole business about oh, yeah. consumption. We just added that category. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Um... I'm happy to work on consumption and solid waste because I think they kind of go. I think in. they go together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Jessica. Yeah. And who else? Linda, how about you? Sure. Who's calling that meeting? I Jessica. will. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jessica. Um, so and and this is also Linda part two. Uh, then we have municipal operations. It's easy. The book Corey on it. <laughs> Who else? Okay. Natural environment. Is this Brian? Who else? I will. Dana? Who's going to call that meeting? I can. Did Brian disappear? I can. No, I can do it. I was, I was just seeing if she would actually would fess up. She did. She fessed up. She fessed up. Okay. We have community resiliency and preparedness. I can do that. Okay. Somebody else? Uh, what's her name is not here. We're all called Tamara. for, aren't we, that are here? Tamara. We'll yeah, do. Tamara. That's what I was thinking. Okay. okay. I'm going to, you have to call that meeting. I'll email her. Ask her. Okay. And that's it. Yep. So the assignment, you can help me that. The assignment is to take that piece and look at it. And when you look at it, I suggest you look at other people's climate action plan, Kenmore, Shoreline, Burien, Mercer Island, and um, Kirkland has one too, but uh, those are the ones I think are kind of done by the same consultants. They have some consistency to them to, to look at those. Um, and then do we start a new document? Do we just put a new? No, I think just, just edit this stuff like, like we've got a lot of comments already right. okay. and suggestions like people you know for your section go through either accept or reject right. you know address the comments and check them off so that when we come back we've got something that reduces all this redundancy of like it seems like stuff has recently been moved around and so it's it's difficult to read the document because there's just so much redundancy yeah. um get it to a point where we can just kind of all read through it and say like, okay, yeah, like maybe this one changed, but we can just like approve this section. Great, okay. Uh, great. Does this survey have stuff in it that we should consult to see whether there's community feedback that would inform some of these actions? Uh, I don't know. Um, oh, yes, but we have a whole section on the survey, so we'll, um yes okay i don't know how to answer your question so, yeah. but it's important uh so and, let's... and you were going to put the results of these epics right i think that was one of the claims that we got one day from this document that the survey would be in the right the, su the survey results yeah. would be yeah, yeah. but yeah. isn't the survey kind of to inform the committee us uh, of what yes what this document would be so I can't remember what in the survey enough to know whether that's I, that would be. I think it's tough because like the, the survey represents what citizens think we should do, which democratically you could argue like that's what we should do. But also a lot of these people don't know anything about climate change. And so like if like from an evidence standpoint, we know what we should do, then maybe what we learned from the survey is more like these are the knowledge gaps. These are the things that we're going to have to teach people as part of the plan. I think that right. that's what I got out of a lot 
of the survey was like, you know, maybe there are some good ideas in there that we haven't thought of, but the vast majority of it is just like, oh, people don't know what heat pumps are. Yeah. yeah. It can be both. Yeah, yeah it, it can be both, right? And so that's why I think including it as an appendix in our report would be good. So yes, we will. Thank yeah, but maybe also then use it to inform like tell the the city that we need them to pay attention to heat pumps. Okay. I what I will do is um maybe yeah. had developed a set of a summary of sort of the the questions that people answer, then we'll send that out again. Um just so you can look at what people it was sort of how how many people thought what kinds of things in the questions we asked and and then um uh let's see i'll send that the survey to somebody and then we'll see what we have uh, i'll look and see if there's other stuff that i think ought to go out um the i, I know we have now we have Minus two minutes, but I did want to say we're doing the green fair. Tamara, um, did did Tamara send out a survey asking when people could come to it? No. Nope. Okay. Uh, I will send out a questionnaire to the, uh, tom the tomorrow morning, just saying, can you come to the green fair? I've developed a half of a of a brochure. Which um, is there anybody who's would like to take a look at that with me? Um, just done. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, Tracy. Uh, uh, get with. What what day is the green fair? It's the twenty ninth. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and it's twenty second. It's from ten to two, and we're just looking for people to sit at the booth. And I'll just send out um, right. a, a note. Yeah. Also, people, people set up and take down. Yeah, and set up and take down. Oh, you like sitting in booths? Okay. <laughs> Matt's our sitter and chill. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see if I just. Anything else? All right. I yeah. So oh, we've already we do have a schedule for the to be at the farmers market again. I don't know what we're going to do there, but um, we do have that scheduled. And the green fair and the garden tour are also places where we'll have some outreach opportunities to see. Um, I I thank you for dipping your oar in the water on these issues and. Let's see where we are next month. I, I feel like we're making a little progress. I like to I'm at, at affirm this. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, is there anything else that we need to do for the good of the order? Okay, we're done. All right. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Bye, y'all. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. Thanks, sir. Sweat Lodge. <laughs>